Hello, this is a specimen of a longitudinally bisected uterus and we're looking at the cut surface here. This is the endometrial cavity. This thin layer is the endometrium, which is the innermost layer of the uterine wall or the mucosal lining of the uterus. Here is the myometrium and the outer layer is the uterine serosa. So just to orientate you a little bit, this is the anterior surface. This is the posterior surface of the uterine serosa. So here we're looking at the anterior surface and the uterine serosa reflects anteriorly off the bladder. So here is the part where you no longer see the serosa because it reflects off the bladder. This is the right lateral surface of the uterus and the adnexa have been uh, dissected away. And here is the posterior uterine serosal surface where you can see the peritoneal uh, covering uh, of the uterine serosa actually extends a little bit lower down and then it later on reflects off the rectum. So the main pathology is this large friable yellowish mass that is expanding the endometrial cavity. And we can see that this mass sort of arises in the superior part of the uterine body. It appears to arise from the endometrium. And more importantly, we can see that there is a suggestion that this mass actually invades into the myometrium. This is a case of endometrial carcinoma of the uterus, and this is a primary malignancy that arises in the endometrial layer of the uterus. There are actually two main types of endometrial carcinoma, and type 1 is associated with unopposed estrogen stimulation, so hence there is often a precursor state of endometrial hyperplasia. This hyperplasia may manifest with abnormal uterine bleeding, for example, postmenopausal bleeding uh, or intermenstrual bleeding. And often this occurs around the 55 to 65 year age group. There may also be pre-existing uh, obesity, diabetes or hypertension. Microscopically, these tumors are generally relatively well differentiated. They have the features of this type of endometrial carcinoma called endometrioid carcinoma. This is one of the histologic types of endometrial carcinoma. It's one of the commonest types. And generally, it is a little bit less aggressive in terms of its behavior, so the prognosis is better. This is in contrast to type 2 endometrial carcinoma. This is not associated with a history of unopposed estrogen, so it's not associated with a background of endometrial hyperplasia. It usually occurs in a slightly older age group, and the background endometrium is generally atrophic rather than hyperplastic. Microscopically, this usually comprises one of the higher grade types of carcinomas, for example, serous carcinoma. And this is generally more aggressive in terms of behavior. So these two types of tumors are also associated with different molecular alterations. Let's have a look at the microscopic features of type 1 endometrial carcinoma. So here is an example of endometrioid endometrial carcinoma. And uh, we can see that there are these tightly packed glands uh, which are quite branching and this is towards the endometrial cavity. Here is the myometrium. So that these glands are actually coming and invading into the myometrium. Here again is a higher magnification view. These are the malignant glands and we can actually still see that the cells are quite columnar. Uh, the nuclei are rather elongated but it looks relatively well differentiated. We don't see a very great deal of nuclear pleomorphism here. And these glands are directly sitting in the myometrium, hence there is myometrial invasion. So in terms of prognostic factors, it is important to see how deep the invasion is into the myometrium, whether there is penetration of the serosa, and of course whether there is local invasion into adjacent structures such as the vagina, as well as the surrounding organs like the bladder and the colon. Clinically, endometrial carcinoma usually presents with abnormal uterine bleeding, for example, intermenstrual bleeding if the patient is premenopausal, or often um, there will be postmenopausal bleeding. In summary, this is a case of endometrial carcinoma showing a friable yellowish tumor that is expanding the endometrial cavity and also invading into the superficial myometrium. Thank you.